G'day guys, Sean Savage here from Streaker Marine. Today we have the 2635 models from Cruisecraft, the Outsider and the Explorer. As they are the same hull, they are a different configuration. So while we've got both boats inside the showroom, we thought we'd go through both packages and we might uh, show you a few hints on what, which one might suit you better if you're looking for your next purchase. So while we're actually at the front of the boats, I'm just gonna go through some of the features that these boats have as far as options, just so you can understand what's what. First thing, the GAL Easy Tow Trailer versus the Alloy Easy Tow Trailer. The reason why this customer's gone the GAL is because he needed to have a pivot drawbar. So this boat here has a pivot drawbar. We can remove this pin and spin the drawbar across to save some room in the garage. The GAL trailers are fantastic. They've got an awesome drive on section. They are a little bit heavier than the aluminium trailers, but built from Easy Tow, Australian made, made in Victoria, and they're a brilliant trailer. The Explorer over here has the aluminium I-beam trailer. It does have, I think, a bit of a wider drive on. It is a little bit lighter and it's a smidgen more expensive as well. So they're two things you consider when you're speaking to us about uh, which one might suit you best. They both have stress-free drum anchor winches on both boats. This one is the standard color, which is the Cruise Craft White. This is our charcoal hull. And while we've gone with the charcoal in this boat, we've also gone with the black windscreen over the standard factory grey windscreen. And when we get inside the boat, you'll see some highlighted colors such as the dash, the side pockets, and under the hard top. So what we're gonna do now is focus on the outsider, go through some of the unique features of the outsider and see if they might suit you best. So here we are aboard the outsider. Now with the outsider, I suppose where you gain, you also lose. So the basic changes between the Explorer and the outsider is with the outsider, this side deck here is taller. So below the windscreen to your side decks, this section's about 30 mil higher. That makes you um, about 30 mil, obviously higher in your headroom here. So if you are a little bit taller, the outsider does have a taller deck. And by having this section higher, that carries all the way forward into the cabin, which gives us more headroom inside the cabin. So we've got a bigger cabin, we've got more headroom than the Explorer, and our actual dash is pushed back further into the boat. So if you measured from the bow sprit to the dash, this one is longer, which gives you a bigger cabin in length, a taller cabin. Um, so we've got better overnight quarters. And by sitting back that fraction further as well, you can get a marginally softer ride being a little bit further back in the boat. But as I said, where you gain, you lose. Once we get to here, our distance from our driver, passenger seats to our transom is shorter. To, carry, to, to, to allow for the bigger cabin. So from this stainless steel rail to the back of the transom here is 1.85 meters long. And from this rail to this rail is two meters long. So I suppose this boat is a little bit more designed as well for the family or even the overnight stay. Bigger cabin for the kids, bigger cabin if you're gonna do some sleeping in the boat. The other thing it has, what we'll see when we jump in the boat is it has a full length rear lounge where in the Explorer, it's a three quarter rear lounge. We'll show you that in a moment. Um, still ample room at the back here. It does feel a little bit tighter because we've got this table in, but the table is removable. So once we remove this table, we do have plenty of room for fishing. We've got these 110 liter Evercool Eskies. You can have these as an Esky or a fridge freezer. Um, they're very unique to cruise craft and they work fantastic, but I think there's still ample room here, and if you're looking for something with a bit of a cabin, this will work for you. One last feature we should go through with the outside that's quite unique, is we have full walking quarters around the side decks. So what that means is the cabin will be slightly narrower, so maybe between the seats is a little bit narrower, but it gives me the option to stand up and safely and extremely comfortably walk around the side of the boat. Um, if you're parking onto jetties, parking onto the beach, um, and you need to get to the front of the boat. The outsider really caters extremely well for that. And you can see with this guy, he chose the outsider because he will be going to the front of the boat quite a lot. He's got a ladder at the front there. So he'll be parking up on the beach and boarding and exiting the boat from the bow. So it's very safe and easy for the wife, family and kids to walk around the side of this boat. So there's some features that the outsider has. What we'll do now is we'll jump in the boat 
and go through a little bit more of the layout. So starting from the back of the boat, we do have the premium cruise craft bait board. It has the knife racks along here. It has the lid and it also has the allocation for the tubs to go under the bait board. We have a big live bait tank at the back here and we also have the allocation for a deck wash if you have one in this boat. Uh, the rear lounge, as I said a moment ago, is full length. So we still have a transom door, but we also have for catering more guests or taking the family out. A full length rear lounge, which I think is a great selling feature. It's very easy to use sometimes when uh, boat manufacturers make a full length rear lounge like that, they're very cumbersome. But as you can see, Cruise Craft think of everything and they really give a lot of thought to their design and this rear lounge works fantastic. The other feature that the uh, both hard tops have, but the outsider having a slightly larger hard top, has its shade extension that almost covers the full rear lounge. So if you are after shade in the boat, these stainless steel shade extensions are brilliant from Cruise Craft, but having the longer hard top and push back a little bit, we do get the shade going all the way back. Um, the advantage of the shade extension though is we do have no external fittings going down. So if we are fishing, it doesn't affect our fishing. And then once we're done at the end of the day, loosen these off, two thumb screws either side, slides back in. While we're there, as we come across Cruise Craft, one thing that they've always done extremely well is their dash layouts. So this boat has the steel gray dash. And this is what we call the large dash. So the large dash, the way that you're gonna identify the large dash is typically this hump just here. The small dash will be flat the whole way across and it will be narrower in and slightly sh shorter in height. Now, choosing between the two dashes is very simple. If you are actively in and out of the cabin, by getting the smaller dash, it'll cut across here which will give you a wider um, entry into the cabin. But if you're thinking about running multiple screens, autopilot screens, cameras, whatever else you're thinking, and you need that extra dash space, this Cruise Craft dash is brilliant. We've got our wiper here, trim tabs, the new Yamaha CL5 touchscreen gauge, our anchor winch, Garmin touchscreen. This is the standard steering wheel. We'll see in a, in a moment the next steering wheel and the next boat will be the... Um, the stainless steering wheel. So what I'm gonna do is gonna jump in this cabin for a moment. My entry is great so I have a step down so I don't have to duck down too much. And I can sit in here basically almost at full height. Um, and laying wise, it's just over six foot, I would suggest. We have red off on in the cabin. And it looks this one has a toilet as well. Nope, but that's the allocation for the toilet, which is also extremely well thought out. All right, so now we're in the Explorer. The Explorer, by just throwing the tape measure over it, is the same width from rail to rail at two meters, but it's also two meters from the stainless steel seat frame to the back of the transom. So we're talking 200 mil in extra length at the back of the boat, where we've lost it inside the cabin. But if you're not after a cabin, you're after a big dance floor at the back, this will suit you a lot better. We still have the shade extension, which comes out an ample distance. We have in this boat, the charcoal inner liner off the hard top, and we've matched that with the, the black windscreen, which looks fantastic. So we'll go through the rear lounge in a moment. That's a three quarter one. We still have walk around decks. You'll see this boat doesn't have the stainless steel handrail. It is an option on this one but we can still safely get around to the front if that's something that you do want to occasionally do. Um, but I suppose where this one really shines is if you're gonna be fishing multiple people, there's this ample room for a 6.35 meter boat. It is brilliant at the back here. You might, have meant, you might have noticed on the outsider, it had the Yamaha gray motor. This one's got the new Yamaha pearl white, which looks amazing. Um, we have the big live bait tank exactly the same as the outsider. We have the deck wash connection at the back here. One smart thing that Cruise Craft always have done, which um, 
your credit to them, is they also have their switch panels for anything that works at the back of the boat, at the back of the boat. So underwater lights, deck wash, live bait tanks, whatever you have, instead of racing all the way to the front all the time, it's all powered at the back of the boat where you'll be most active when you're fishing. We saw this one, we actually put a clip here so you can, you can have where the, um, where the deck wash will sit. Um, the Yamaha on this one's the electric steering as well. So it's the new generation Yamaha gear. It's the um, electric control box and electric steering, which works brilliant. So we'll jump in this one and go through some of the dash layouts and et cetera, and see if you like this one a little bit more. Okay, rear lounge wise, it's still ample. So we've got two here, up she goes, and out, it's that simple. I'm gonna put it away from, actually what I'm gonna do for a moment is put it down so we can open this up. We've got access to battery one, battery two, water separator. Uh, another thing that Cruise Craft do, which is fantastic, is they individually plumb everything. So if you have a live bait tank and a deck wash, you're running your own skin fittings, own valves, independent pumps. So nothing's piggybacked off each other. It's all its own independent system. So they also allow for this uh, vinyl cover to knead all that up. And then when we want to go fishing and have maximum room inside the boat, up and in. This is the two switches for this particular boat. It just has a live bait tank and a deck wash. And that's where we can turn each individual pump on from. We also still have a transom door straight through the back. Um, with this option here, you can have this as an inspection port that gets straight to the battery, or you can also fit a four drawer Plano tackle box in these. And if you had to get to that battery, you just undo these screws here and you can get to it. Just something to consider when you're looking at these. We have the, as we saw from the outside, the charcoal hull, but we also have the charcoal kick panels just here, which tidy up beautifully. We've gone with the charcoal over storm gray sea deck. And this is 100 mil plank lines. So you can get in 100 mil or one in the middle at 50 mil plank lines. We also have the charcoal dash. So with the charcoal dash, the whole panel here is in the charcoal. As remember, the inner hard tops in the charcoal. And this is the upgraded steering wheel we were just talking about, which is a stainless steering wheel with the knob. Um, so that might be something that you, uh, you may consider, but does come with this knob if you like it um, or not. Lastly, with the color highlights, it's a tinted cabin door rather than the white Perspex cabin door. The advantage of that door is the light's on, you can briefly see in, but when you're inside the cabin, you can very easily see out, where with the white door, you can't see anything. So we'll have a look inside the cabin. This one has the center bunk again. Look, there's still, there's room. There's still plenty of room, realistically. It does feel a little bit shorter from this bulkhead to there. So we've sort of worked out that's about 200 mil from what we've saved at the back of the boat. Um, remembering again, if you are getting in and out of the cabin quite a lot, there's still ample room here, but by going the smaller dash, it will cut it across here a little bit, which will give you more room to get out. Um, but a lot of people aren't buying these boats for the cabins. They're buying them for the ultimate performance a cruise craft give you. They're, giving, they're also looking for the fishing room if it is a fishing boat. But if you're gonna split that between a bit of family, a bit of fishing, maybe a bit of overnight stay, the guy next door might shoot to you as well. So I hope that helps with your next boat purchase. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us through our uh, comments or also through our website through streakermarine.com.au. Thanks for watching.